Right, so I see you have a prototype system here. Can you tell us a, a little bit about this system and what does it do? This is a white LED system. Uh, it is intended to uh, provide further power savings versus a regular LED lamp. And it does this by uh, using a human presence sensor to shut down the light when it's not needed, when there's nobody present. Can you guys talk about uh, each of the components and uh, and yeah, where's the sensor or like what's the light and so here we have a uh, a three watt LED. It's currently running at about one one watt. Yeah. Uh, we have four AA batteries providing power to it. Uh, the the main board has a processor on it. Mm -hmm. I'll take off the back right now. So sure. we're going to use the back to cover it. Later. And here we have a a passive infrared sensor. This sensor checks for two, basically checks to see if there's differences um, along its range in, in infrared radiation hitting it. And if it sees differences, it outputs a pulse, which then restarts the timer on the processor to keep the light on for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. The two potentiometers here, one controls the output level. Oh, okay. So by turning it. Mm -hmm. So I can yeah. turn it down to about 2%, up yeah. to 100%. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. And it's up to the user to turn whatever way uh, they want. And by turning it down, it actually reduces the power usage, right? It's Definitely, not just yeah. making it dimmer. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. And the other? The other one uh, it controls the amount of time before it, uh, before it will shut down on its oh, own. Oh, okay. So can you show us uh, like the, the features now? To uh, like the, that's the sensor, right? Can you show us how that works? Uh, currently, the sensor is picking us up. So if I was to uh, turn this down, so I want it to go. The, I can adjust the range before it goes off between approximately 10 seconds and 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was to turn disconnect the sensor, it would be as if uh, there was no more presence in the room. Right, right. And after approximately 10 seconds, the lamp will begin to dim. Mm -hmm. and it will dim over a period of 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So about t uh, 10 seconds, uh, it should uh, like shut off. Yes, and, and we can see it dimming now. Mm -hmm. I, I found this to be uh, fairly well done when I was trying to read with the system during mm -hmm. the conference. Right, it's completely off now. Yeah. Right, so you can now plug it back on. And, uh, and you think, if you if we cover it with a bag, it'll be the same, or it will it be. It should be the same, but it's. Uh, it may not, like the the light may still go from it sideways. Uh, it it would be differences in presence. If we walk over here, it may work. Oh, better. okay. It still be cover the bag, and where we it's, it's better way we just stand still because. Oh, okay. There, there's there's going to be a fair amount of IR probably going to go through that and then being detected. So if we stand still, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if I pull the bag off, it sees us. All right, right. And goes back on. Right. And of course, all this is uh, while the power consumption actually go lower, right? Correct. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. When the lamp is turned on full brightness, it's drawing about 350 milliamps or a little bit more. Uh, when the lamp is off, it draws about two two milliamps, mm -hmm. and uh, the current is completely proportional to how bright the lamp is. Right. And can you talk about the, the it's passive, right? What do you mean by that? What that means the sensor itself doesn't draw any power. Yeah, passive basically means it uh, doesn't draw any power and and consume as little as power, consume very little power in the sense of very little compared to the input. Of Mm -hmm. And you guys did some C programming, uh, and t tell us a little bit about that. Uh, this processor, I, I worked with these before, they're uh, AB ABR ML processors, they're, they have a, a good uh, C language support for them using mm -hmm. GCC compilers, so they're quite easy to work with as a hobbyist uh, uh, program. And the code itself came to about 1,300 lines of C and, and uh, source code and, and comments mm -hmm. went on in it. Right. Talk a little bit about uh, um, things that can be improved on your prototype. When you build a project like this, there's millions of things you can think of to improve. Uh, I'd, uh, first of all, we could uh, have, yeah, first of all, we could have a, like a variety of other sensors to mm -hmm. implement the system so that we can detect more infected detect, detecting emotion. Mm -hmm. Also, we could probably are uh, picking up a more cost infective sensors. In this case, this is the the passive PR module sensor we pick it up. Uh, if we could have a chance to do it again, probably we're gonna just buy the sensor alone, we're gonna implement it 
using our own circuitry to can more most most we can effectively can detect the motion and uh, that in that way can reduce the cost a lot. By about 10 to 20 percent, it should reduce the cost of mm -hmm. module. How much uh, does it cost right now uh, for you guys to build it? This entire prototype you see here, with the exception of the batteries, came to about $45. Mm -hmm. The batteries are in install about 10 to $15. Right. And the sensor alone only about like 4 bucks, but the module is actually 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. I think the most money comes from this module, basically taking out of the, after uh, the, de the, the action is detected, the motion is detected, and it has to basically do some filter and amplification and, and, and probably like an ADC uh, to a digital so that a microcontroller can. Right. And with um, the motion, s motion sensor, it lets uh, a, a fully charged ba battery runs longer, right, and uh, I guess between, uh, between each charge or something like that. Correct. By, by turning off the lamp when there's nobody present, it, the lamp basically goes into shutdown or hibernation mode uh, while, while, they're, while it's not needed. Mm -hmm. Another uh, future addition we'd like to do is a daylight sensor using a um, basically a light sensor that would run into another input on the processor so that uh, if the light was left out in the sun, it would automatically turn off immediately mm -hmm. because there's already sufficient external light source for it. Right. So after all the technical stuff, I want to ask each of you guys a personal question. How, how does taking a course like this change you personally? from before you take this course and after? Um, uh, personally, I, my feeling is after taking this class, I really think about like, uh, like outside the, the world I was currently living, like I think about like, you know, there are still too many people living in the environment country without connecting the electrical grid and without, you know, having a chance of reading and writing and learning and going to school. That's really like make me like think about that and I really appreciate that taking that course and you know yeah. Mm -hmm. And how about you? Myself, uh, I found this a uh, very interesting course in, in in allowing us to consider applications for what we do. I primarily am a firmware programmer than a developer. I don't actually often get to play directly with the hardware, so this mm -hmm. project was a was a really good way to uh, implement something and go through the entire process of building a project and also then to see how it can be adapted to real life, understand how how it, uh, how to make it user friendly, non intrusive to the user so it can actually be used. Mm -hmm. All right, well thank you very much. Thank you.